Tequila. Hello. Right. So we'll start with me sharing my screen. And uh, actually, shall I just do? Would you rather prefer I say a few words about the project first, or would you rather see the sequence first and then get some comments on what? Can we combine? like and that and these ah. uh, comments <laughs> while watching absolutely right okay let me just share my screen then uh it's gonna be in figma so i'm going to do some zooming in and zooming out mm -hmm. um while i show you the sequence so basically this sequence is quite raw i've uh, shot it about a week ago and it was a very spontaneous thing that just happened. So I wasn't really planning on doing that. I mean, I'm, so I was sort of calculating what would I have shot if I was given the, the opportunity to get into the building and to do a few photographs. But I wasn't really planning the project. It just, it was sort of a spur of the moment thing. So basically, the, uh, the draft name is Craft Central Liminal or Craft Central in Limbo. So Craft Central is basically the building that's on the photographs. It's now standing empty. It's been occupied by a number of uh, arts and crafts, independent businesses and sole traders for quite a few years, if I'm not mistaken, since 2007. But I need to double check that, but quite a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, this building, it served as a place for people who wanted to start their own um, arts or crafts uh, businesses to actually start doing them and flourish there and progress in that. Unfortunately, uh, this year in February, they all of the people that were subletting the cubicles in this building were given very short notice to move out of the building in the span of two weeks time which is unprecedented, ridiculous, and very horrible for the small businesses that obviously used to occupy these premises. They were forced to very quickly search for either a place to store their uh, belongings and tools in, or to try and search for another creative space to actually move in there. And after that, after they moved out, the place right now stands empty and awaits its further fate which nobody knows about yet and i as i used to rent a space here a while ago i sort of have some personal feelings towards that obviously but i also uh curated and co-curated an exhibition there a few weeks back so it was sort of like an emotional lick to this place and i wanted to capture it the way it is frozen in time with un unexpected and unknown future now in this state of limbo so this is why it's called craft central in limbo so i was given the opportunity to go through the rooms and to take photos of them and i took photos of every room that i could get my hands on just as they were left left by the occupants in quite a hurry uh, and i want to make it into a zin which will probably be a not your regular classic book but it will have foldable pages so this is why these four are standing here like next to each other and below each other so probably they will be foldable like that uh so it's sort of a meditation of on the geometry of empty spaces and the spaces that still have some objects left that will probably still be left there until everything is liquidated also the tragic thing about this space is that the uh wooden cubicles that you can see here that actually form those the separate cubicles for artists and craftspeople they were constructed by an architectural team especially for this place and especially for the purpose of housing artists and craftspeople so it's really sad that probably most likely we everything you see will probably be torn apart and just destroyed so it's just it's it's a lot of feelings that i got as a person who was once 
very briefly linked to that space. And I have no idea what the residents of these cubicles must have felt when they got the news that they have to move out in two weeks. Because it wasn't just the space to rent uh, and work there. It was obviously a hub and a community. And people met there. People created projects together. People did some amazing, amazing things there. Uh, yeah, so it's like a whole life that's just been torn apart, like an end of an era. What I also know about this, not really this space, but the organization who actually ran the space, which was called the Clerkenwell Green, is that they actually ran this organization, uh, this, this, the, the team ran this thing for 40 years. And uh, right now, after 40 years, everything just came to an end with no idea how it's going to unveil next. Yeah, so basically these are the photos and this is my story. Uh, what I have in mind is I want to get in touch with a few residents of the space that I'm acquainted with. I want to visit them in the coming weeks and maybe take their portraits in their new surroundings. Some of them have already found the space and they've already made it their new home for their new office. So they're quite set there while others are still in a state of limbo and juggling a lot of things that they just had to move out and it's like in the middle of their flat now or somewhere in a temporary space. And I want to interview them like very shortly and maybe ask them to provide some thoughts and impressions that they have about the whole experience of ending this so abruptly. And I will, if I do that, I will probably place uh, their very short quotes about that between the pages. So it'll be like an, a blank, uh, a blank set of pages. Um, and one of them is going to be like a quote from a person. I'm not really sure whether I want to include text in the book yet, but if I do, it's probably going to be in this shape and form. Uh, portraits as well. I'm not really sure I want to include them in the zine because I really like how these empty spaces just sort of communicate with each other and how the geometry of empty rooms works together. So I doubt I will include any portraits of people, but it's just one of the things that I also thought about. What else? Uh, yeah, that's probably it. So what I want to know from you is, what are the three words that you want to give me when you look at these photos? And what maybe some associations or any feedback that you can actually put into these three words? Yeah. Um, so while looking at all of that, I, I've been thinking about weird combination of that some of the picture I can see in black and white. Hmm. Um, and I think about that um, the probably the way how you uh, the the way how it will affect on a viewer if it would be in black and white it would be very much different uh, from what it is when it's in color because mm. the color is so comfortable mm. you know mm. and the color is warm and the color is this uh, wood uh, and the light light is also really soft all of the things they they don't bring a conflict here mm. it, it, it looks like a very soft space mm -hmm. uh, like it is not that is something that was uh left just day ago right there is no drama here no uh so, so much scene problem and even the heart uh, on the keys in the in the door this this small wooden heart mm -hmm. it also like like a joke you know mm -hmm. uh, because it is there and you start to think more about something comfortable and maybe even romantized but then it is not it is your uh like almost sorrow and saying goodbye mm -hmm. but yeah. at the same time you're just observer from the side because as you said it is not that much your space he wasn't like really uh 
rent in a space there, right? Mm -hmm. You wasn't uh, built in in a community, but you uh, feel so passionate about it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think like like this one, uh, mm -hmm. right? It should stay in color because of these green marks and red and everything. It's so balanced and so good and so right that it's almost wrong to be here. Um, but <laughs> in the same time, some of them, like the picture in the very beginning, uh -huh. uh, not the, the very first one, I think it is third or... Uh -huh. uh, let me just scroll to that uh-huh because it's a bit weird one um it looks like you've been shooting this picture through something ah you mean the one okay i think i got you it's it, are these two yeah but i'm i i'm actually i i guess it it is uh, applicable for both of them but more for the right one uh -huh. so I just think about like with the right one immediately I think about Japanese photography mm. and and all of these um, experiments and all of these but in the same time if it would be black and white it could be like it's a some kind of mockumentary from um, some detective for some yeah. uh, investigation or something like this you know mm -hmm. so i don't i don't know either it would be like good and balanced or it would be too much and uh, -huh. uh it would lead to some other uh, uh -huh. perception yeah okay that's um i think what i find valuable is that you say that it lacks drama is too it, it's all too calm and cozy uh mm -hmm. that's that's what i was it's sort of one of the things i was going for but it seems that it just needs a little pinch of, of pepper there but actually coming back to my question what are the three words that you will give me yes so the first is like this comfortable uh -huh. and soft and i would place them together um mm -hmm. then the second is details i guess mm -hmm. the uh, when you look at the picture on the first time and all of them look quite the same, right? Uh, colors are the same and places the same. And then I, I was going through, like first time, right? I was going through all of them and you don't notice that much. Then you look for the second time and you can notice bigger amount of some small details that can tell you a story. And then for a third time, and the more you would look, the more you would notice. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that it's about details that develop itself. Mm -hmm. um, great and okay. then uh, yeah i keep scrolling through them that's fine and then i guess i have about the first picture i didn't think that it's about every uh or any other picture but about the first one yes i like uh the position of camera and this one because okay. this is balanced this is like the this could be a visualization of a limbo itself, right? Mm. Uh, because it is almost like it's from the floor, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it takes not the equal, it's like one third and two thirds, something like this, right? The floor is one third and then it is such a... Um, I think that the balance is just exactly perfect to be called uh, liminal space, limb, or something that huh. don't exist, or some space that don't exist and exist at the same time. It could uh -huh. be a Schrodinger cat uh, in form yeah. of photography. But yeah, it kind of it's here. It's not here. It could be made up. It could be uh, photography made by AI or something like this. It could be collected from different photographs. It could be shot like that. Mm -hmm. it it can be so many things at the same time mm -hmm. so yeah i guess balance also okay funnily enough that's the last picture i chose for the sequence because i felt i put i put the whole sequence except for this picture that wasn't mm -hmm. the original plan to actually include it at all then i looked at the sequence and i thought ah it's lacking something so i went back to the raw files and i thought like yes that's the one and i put it like an hour before our call 
and I actually am happy that I did because yeah, it does feel like a good uh good starting point, I would say. Okay. Yeah, it, yeah for sure. It is kind of a start in the beginning, like and the beginning and the end in the same time. And I think that maybe um maybe there is a way how you can put it both ways, right? Mm -hmm. And there and there. Yeah, what I wanted to do is actually I I like to include the starting and the ending picture, the way that they communicate with each other. Mm -hmm. You might yeah, you might remember that I tend to do that. And basically what I chose for the end picture is uh, is this. Mm -hmm. So I thought that it's I mean I wanted to do like a hanging something. It's sort of like to to emphasize the in limbo thing, but then I thought that this rainy wet pavement and the building, the wall of the building, they sort of kind of like put this firm cemented end to the mm -hmm. story. Because yeah, unfortunately, I wish there could be like a miracle and all these people would be invited to move it back in, but that's not gonna be ha happening. Uh, yeah, also one other thing I forgot to mention, the building itself, uh, in, in the UK, it's it's like, there's a sort of a grading of historical buildings and the, the 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 level of the grade allows the landlord to do or not to do something with the building itself so mm -hmm. if it's historical importance or cultural importance uh grade something grade one grade two grade three something like that there's there's limits that you can do with it so sometimes if you buy an old house like really old like a 16th century or 17th century and you start living in it sometimes you're not allowed to drill holes in some places so you're not allowed to replace windows you are only allowed to hire people who can only work with authentic historical techniques to restore something so that's really really important and this building is i think is grade two i do not remember what grade two means in particular but what I do know is that they are not allowed to make any major changes to the structure itself. The building used to be one of the buildings used for the construction of the largest ever. Uh, I think it was the trade ship designed by Eastern Bird mm -hmm. well, that was called Great Easter. It was, a, it was so large it could not fit into any docks <laughs> in other countries. So basically it didn't really make it the the big invention that brunel envisioned it and actually he died like a year later so it was it, it, it sort of is ah i now i feel it um interesting that the great eastern sort of ended its fate without ever having been in the limelight it was supposed to be in as the largest ship that could carry loads of stuff and loads of passengers because it wasn't really made exactly to the world it was in if i make sense and basically now this building is just standing hollow and all of these wonderful people left it and it sort of kind of like correlates sort of in a way yeah interesting yeah it's such a twist right it's like uh -huh. history repeats itself in a in a different form but yeah with the same effect kind of yeah I, it, it, obviously these are very different stories and obviously the projects that were created in in on the premises are fantastic and some of them are very successful so you can't really say it's the greatest and but anyway yeah now it's sort of like in the same limbo maybe it used to be after the mm -hmm. construction of the ship was finished so yeah so uh so i'm thinking of zin and i don't want to make it like a a really really long project i really want to finish it maybe within the next month and just do it by hand um yeah i wanted to ask your feedback about whether you actually want to see some text in it because i still don't want to see any text in it i think it's it's fine the way it is no i think it is it, it is something that should be like maybe not in the book itself maybe not in the scene itself maybe it should be um uh, something that supports the zine like maybe some additional book that uh, is installed in that one with mm -hmm. the story with uh, the maybe even all of the details that you mentioned like quite not not exactly precise but you know like very 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 much detailed story mm -hmm. from the first uh, notice and the the first 
mention of this building in the in the books that you might find in library mm -hmm. and then like with all of these pre precise details of like uh, on which page it is written and in which book who was an author and all of the things um and to like to have it more almost like as a tribute mm -hmm. or something like this to the yeah. building you know uh, yeah not not even to the things that is uh coming to the end at this very moment but more to to the yeah to the building that it stands hollow now and then uh, it doesn't know the story what what's going to yeah. happen with it we don't know but it has it passed and you know like yeah to do like that but to have it separately mm -hmm. yeah that's and what maybe, i'm thinking and maybe then there there shouldn't be any description of uh why there is these pictures and uh and the the story of the building here like no um no project statement right but the story to state uh mm -hmm. instead of that maybe if i put it in a separate pocket that goes with the zen so some yeah, yeah, yeah. something that's physically very separate but still within it yes Okay. Yeah, I guess I guess it is something like that. It is it it is for sure shouldn't be like put in together so much that it will be the one. It should be two separate things. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I yeah I probably won't want to be adding. Yeah, I really don't. Want, the, the reason I don't want to add uh, people in it, although the people are actually what made this building the way it is, is that I think as soon as I add the people, as in photos and their stories, it'll become a very different project no so I, I want it to be empty and actually the, the funny thing is that you mentioned that you want to remove the color because the walls are too warm but actually i really want it to stay because i want the people to see how they're still warm from the people that occupied them so that that's yeah it's your your remark is very interesting in yeah i i think that you don't need to any portraits there actually i don't i don't yeah. really think that if you would see some human being in this space it would not make it better anyhow and uh, if if you would add some like as you said that you can add some of them right but not all of them mm -hmm. and then it's meaningless it is kind of like um there were so many people and then you can show like three five yeah it is like or you can show the amount of people who was there and to collect them to make it less personal and less um, yeah less private it, it should be something like a, a photograph for passport or for documents something like this and to put them like really small pictures in all of these quite uh, archive way uh, like you have a catalog of people yeah. who was there but I don't really think that it will make it somehow uh -huh. noticeably better I think I know what I'll do uh, <laughs> give me a moment I will find that photo because I do have exactly the thing that you mentioned ironically uh, <laughs> yeah I think it's gonna work brilliantly also I wanted to ask you I would love to hear if you if you want if you still have the the, the capacity to do that uh today can you ask me the questions of how would a, a project have changed if that would actually help me find this little bit of paper that i need to input to make it less cozy because this is what i feel it's still it's, it's too stable to be liminal mm -hmm uh so let me just but first i'll find this 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 photo bear with me it's going to be it's almost there hopefully so anyway if i don't find it it's basically it's a list of businesses that used to occupy them was hanging on the door on the glass door uh -huh. and i took a photo of it with my phone but I, i'm just struggling to find it now uh just bear with me a second Oh, come on there's somewhere here so anyway yeah if you have a question of like how would this project have changed been different if i would 
really be happy to hear about that. Okay. Uh, while you were saying about the beginning and the end, I start to think about one uh, idea. I don't think how much good or bad is that. Mm -hmm. It's just that it's some, you know, something that <laughs> mm -hmm. they're in circles in my head now. Um, so I think this. What if? Mm -hmm. What if you will make uh, the book that falls like that, um, like a brochure? right uh -huh. uh, like like this and uh -huh. then the end and the beginning to glue them together ah glue as in ah you mean that it's, mm, it's like a children's story you mean yes yeah, something like it will never be uh like it will never be flat it will be always opened on some side right uh -huh. so some picture would be always opened otherwise like only this position it could be flat right because it is a circle basically oh, and yeah, then yeah. and then each time you can like open it over and over again it will be like circle you can't okay. finish the book maybe yeah now i found it there we go uh oops uh -huh. the one so if i crop it um basically the names are i mean it's it's i suppose it's fine for me to make them public because they used to be public so it's no no infringement there and actually it's maybe even more advertisement for these businesses now so that's great mm -hmm. uh so i think i'm i'm okay to share that uh i'll maybe if the the list still hangs there i'll just take a better photo of that or well, actually maybe that's that is okay you can just cut it out so anyway yeah yeah the book all right so so that it's, it's sort of a circle so that means that this will go with the last one yeah this is all well, yeah, they will, they will like mm -hmm. fit like that, right? Mm -hmm. And then, but it has a problem with all of these additional uh, pictures that you have under, mm -hmm. uh, like a second layer, because I'm not so sure that it will be that much yeah um, useful maybe it will be something that will create problems and it will be difficult to uh uh-huh just in general to use this book uh, i think one one really makes sense in that thing yeah uh, no i i kind of I like the idea of trying to make it continuous although it will be what will it say then Will it say that it's all going to be repeating itself or this is not going to be a limbo anymore? But yeah, I mean, I can play with that. Because I was thinking about a concertina type. Is it a concertina? When it's like like, like a zigzag, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was exactly uh, saying uh -huh. about that. I just forgot the name of it. But yeah, yeah. this zigzag form uh, mm -hmm. and then just to glue two ends to each other and then you have this kind of zigzag circle mm -hmm. right and then you need to like to open it right you have two pages and then the next one and then the next one and it could be flat only when it's opened yeah right? yeah okay that makes sense but then that would mean that if i do that i can only see two pictures at once yes or you can open the circle and look yeah. at all of them at the same very time and maybe there is a way that you can print the ones that is under uh, uh -huh. this second layer you can print it on the inner side yeah possibly. and then like let's say uh you have uh -huh. a circle right uh, on the outer side you have all of the pictures in some spaces on the inner side you also mm -hmm. have them and then when you open it like mm -hmm. completely as a circle uh you will see that there is a pictures inside also yeah they they'll be more hidden yes and yeah then maybe it will affect on um the sequence but it's just an option this is something that i think about like after your words so um, uh -huh. more like an idea yeah but about i think about is what like like what can help to make it more like to add this pepper mm -hmm. Could it be um, that 
sorry, I'm just running with my my own thoughts here. Could it be okay. that the quotes that I can get from at least three people, or even maybe four of them, that will be very, very short impressions of their liminal state, that, as it were, when they left? If I place them on the inner circle, would it be the pepper that I'm looking for? It's just sort of like emphasizes the whole thing. Well, I think that this is something to be tried for sure. Yeah. yeah. And then you have this inner circle to experience with that. Mm -hmm. There is so many things that you can put there. You can put the story of the building there. Yeah, exactly. I can. Nobody can stop me. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Yeah, actually, I especially like these guys here because I, I really played with the ge geometry. Sorry, I'm just now basically blabbing out my, my own impressions of what I did. <laughs> but but I, no, 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 you're right. You're right. They're sounding like really good to each other. Yeah, exactly. What I also noticed, uh, just to get another impression, is that the way the people left the space, so some people wiped out everything, some people left some bulky stuff that they couldn't really carry anymore, and some people just left half of the thing there because they probably were in a rush or couldn't bother or whatever. Like, well, I mean, I could understand. They were quite quite stressed. But yeah, it's it's interesting to see. I, I wanted, so basically what happened is that the space closed. Mm -hmm. and, uh, because I was co-curating an exhibition and helping close it and, you know, was in that process. I didn't have the headspace and the time to run around the building and take photos then. And I was so, 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 so bitter about that. So the, the next day after the exhibition, I actually texted one of the managers and asked them like, oh, could I please come inside? Because I think there's, there's something we've forgotten there, which is true. We did forget a thing, um, which was probably just taken by somebody. And I did want to check it. That's absolutely, it wasn't a lie, but I actually, what I really wanted is actually to get into the building and to take photos if I was allowed to. But they couldn't let me in that day. So I waited for a week and a half. And during this week and a half, I was sort of like treading on that and thinking, like, oh, if I'm let in, I really want to take photos of what people left in terms of like little pieces of, of paper or I don't know, random objects, something like that. And I really want to play with the space like, to make these very abstract geometrical, uh, almost still lives. Yeah, basically these are still lives. And yeah, then I was I got a, an email from another manager said like, oh, we're going to be in like tomorrow. Would you like to come in? And I was like, yes. <laughs> That's so very 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 quick. Uh, and I I and I had 15 minutes to shoot this thing, so I'm quite proud of how quickly my mind reacted to that. <laughs> so that was awesome. A really nice shifts of adrenaline there <laughs> yeah so hopefully yeah. hopefully it makes it to the paper form and uh, shape yeah 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 i would love to see it that's great yeah uh yeah the next thing I, I will be thinking about is the paper i will be using so that's that's the next step but that's after i decide on the concept <laughs> yeah yeah and the size also because in that terms uh, see you have a vertical and you have horizontal and they like work with each other and i think that maybe i don't know actually maybe if you would take a square right it would be too balanced or maybe just because of the uh, sequence that sometimes it's vertical sometimes it's horizontal and then you can also you know play with the um, layout and put it a bit like lower and in some uh in some side yeah. Right? yeah yeah and then to make it like like beat unbalanced not too obvious but you know just a little bit uh -huh. and then we notice all of the things right like this and it usually it feels a bit like not right mm -hmm. if something like this happens uh especially when it's just like a couple of millimeters on the side i have just a you... thing for you yeah this thing <laughs> But in the same time, it's like it is uh, torture. <laughs> it's torture, yeah. You know, you know what? Why these white corners are here? Can you uh -huh. guess? Yeah, uh, it is because of the wide angle. No. Yeah, yeah. It was a wide angle. Angle. I was obviously uh, editing it to to make it. I I really wanted to make them super geometrically correct. 
Uh -huh. That's what you, you do that. You either then crop it out because you have these loose edges or you just leave them like that. And I thought like, should I just leave them like that? Because if they're printed on white paper, they're going to be like, you know, diluted in that paper anyway. And I thought, well, that's fun because that actually gives this uneasiness, I think. Well, that, that was my idea. <laughs> works but yeah i like this so there's there's quite a few of them here <laughs> okay nice great finds people think alike uh do you uh, know that you can also use ai installed in photoshop now that yeah. you can just draw it back if you would like to yeah i just didn't want to uh-huh i i left them on purpose just to see how they i, I even i could have cropped most of them or all of them but i just decided to export them this way and just see how they actually behave and i really like that some of them have these loose weird edges which i think kind of like makes for this uncertainty as well so i'll think how to put it up a notch the uncertainty and the the unbalancedness yes i'll definitely use the positioning on the paper mm -hmm. that will disbalance that so that that's going to be a challenge in itself but that's fun uh yay um actually thank you so much because i feel like it makes sense <laughs> yeah look i i really like uh -huh. i i really like the type of discussions i really like to see how other people work and how they uh how they structure their ideas and how their ideas uh transform into the shape how it finds its shape mm -hmm. yeah i guess like that yeah. so nice it is. <laughs> each time i feel so happy <laughs> that's great i w i felt happy telling you about that because honestly that's um uh, i really like that this project happened because it's it's the perfect combination of my emotional involvement involvement mm -hmm. involvement involvement because i was sort of part of this thing for a very very short amount of time but i still was there so i kind of like know what the place is about i'm not as grown into that as most of the residents that were there at the time it was closed but i still i got the gist of it and i knew the people who ran it so it sort of was a very strong emotional connection for me and actually it was the yeah my sort of um how you say that there's a specific phrase for that I took the plunge in 2021 and I decided to rent the space. I've never ever rented a space for commercial purposes before. So for me, it was a big deal. So I'm really thankful that the people provided me with this. Uh, so it's sort of, anyway, I'm blabbing. Uh, it's <laughs> a great emotional link, but also it's, it's it was so fresh to actually finally shoot something. You know that because I've been doing a lot of stuff for somebody else, for other people, for other artists for months and months now. And I really, really longed for some like a whiff, whiff of fresh air. And I have a project, two projects actually that I'm working on with uh, one with another artist and one for myself. Uh, and they're sort of like more thought through, but this was such a fun sort of way to switch off. Yeah. You know, I get one more idea. I didn't, I don't think this is something like, okay, I'll, I'll just uh, tell you. So I, I started to think about how to make this space less space mm. um, and to make it more like to, to kind of transfer it from the uh, medium of photography and mm -hmm. maybe to put it in some other mm. uh, in some other box. And I think that uh, you know that when you print something uh, in a typography, right? You have this first page. Um, mm. um, like is it sometimes it's first page sometimes it's um on the, on the cuts right on the marks for cuts um and outside of it um these colorful squares right yeah that is for uh to check the color that everything is fine right and to then just to prove that colors are fine so i've been thinking that what if to take one of the pictures and to put it like that in all of the colors just to color it in the in the needed color ah. and to make it like really small not even a sequence but a line of a, of a pictures um with these colors kind of color it in that oh that's uh, interesting 
and then you just put the space in a position of a design and it it becomes an object instead of a space mm -hmm. and then it will continue also to be a space in the same very book so it will be two different things at the same time no three actually it would be history it would be space and it would be an object mm. right colors but this is the thing that should be it should be inside i guess um yeah. not like on this inner side where you go to hide all of the gems so in in, in that part yeah that makes sense. actually <laughs> this idea is really good for the other project that i actually was supposed to be i'm planning i'm still planning to present it on the website that's the one that i actually have been planning very meticulously to do and it's going to be fitting really well there because <laughs> It will be about exploring. So what I what I am about to do is I'm about to spend not 24 hours, but sort of like maybe 18 hours in one spot and just continuously take photos of one mm -hmm. spot, which is a tunnel. Mm -hmm. It's historical, obviously. Uh, because why would I just be in a random tunnel? <laughs> and uh, just record my feelings because it's sort of a, it's, it's a, sensory deprivation of sorts, but also sensory overstimulation at the same time, because it's a tunnel with people. Uh, and it has details of like tiles it's laid with and everything. And I was thinking of, I need some like a reference card for everything uh, texture-wise that's mm -hmm. in the tunnel. So I think these squares will fit in fantastically there. So yeah. I will put it down. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. I'm very happy to produce ideas for Thank you. <laughs> Exactly. Thank you for listening. And actually, it, it's always great bouncing this off of you because you're quite direct if you see something that doesn't really add up. So I'm really grateful for you to be here. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Shall we wrap up? Yes, I guess. I guess. Wait a second. I'll stop it. All right. <laughs>